Hello, and welcome to another fun filled Sunday. Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday? Cue the crowd cheering noises. Cue the arena-sized cheers and stomps. Um, because Native Instruments have oh, have blessed us with uh, the brand new synth in their complete collection uh, called Massive X. And what we're going to do today is take a look at this new instrument, uh, see if we can try to break down as much as we can in, in a, a short you know video without taking too long, um, many of its forms and functions, and how you can navigate around the different modules and the different presets and um, the different uh, routing capabilities that this synth has to offer. So uh, without... Further ado, let's dig in. What I have pulled up right now is just a basic init Massive X uh, preset, and it's just a basic sound. Tame Impala test for you, um, but essentially what we have here is um, just kind of uh, a basic sound to start out with, and um, what, what we're going to start looking at here is the oscillator section, and so anything that you can see here that's in bold uh, text or has an underline underneath it, especially when you kind of hover with your cursor over it, means that this is a menu. And so if you click on this, this opens up for the first oscillator, wavetable 1. And you see there's a number right now. We're on the first wavetable, so it's just a basic sign, uh, try, saw, square. And as you can see, I can cycle between those sounds pretty easily. There's also a number 1 encoded here, and that's on uh, right now uh, being also controlled by uh, a number one of the uh, up to 16 macro controls that you have here at the very top. And so if you wanted to, you could actually control these things via um, these macro controls here at the top of uh, the system. And if you actually click on this, it looks like you can control or assign these macro, macro controls uh, to uh, anything else. Um, I just hit cancel because I want to go ahead and keep this macro control set up the way it is for right now. Within each oscillator, there's also a phase control and a filter control directly here within the oscillator. Now, there's also a dedicated filter section over here, which we'll get into, but each of these oscillators has its own filter before it gets to uh, whatever section it's routed into next. I say that because there's very flexible routing, which we'll also take a look at here. Um, so this is also the level option, um, so you can turn up the level for each of these oscillators and we can go ahead and make changes uh, to the wavetable uh, and have all sorts of different uh, waveforms. So as you can see, uh, there's all just, you know, a number of different um, different waveforms that are in here, as well as a number of remastered, uh, you know, very classic uh, waveforms that you might remember from the original Massive. <laughs> Yeah. 
And so um, we can take a look at these as well. Uh, the really cool thing that I also like to mess with here is also the noise circuit. So this is found right next to the oscillator section. There's two different noise circuits here, the white and a pink. You can also choose between a number of different noise uh, settings as well. I would recommend going through these individually just because there's so many different sounds. Now, of course they're all filterable, but um, it's just really cool. Some of my favorites are here in the environment. So literally you have like, you know, natural sounds kind of built into this synthesizer, which is really badass. Rain on the roof, fucking kidding me. And pitch. You know. Ice water. Or how about beings? How about a grizzly bear? How about a bird? Or a gas? Or machines. These are also some of my favorite here. Factory one is really badass. Or the uh, diesel. That one's also good. So anyway, all of these noise oscillators, badass sounding. And when you add them to, you know, the overall sound, you can get some very, very gnarly tones. And so um, there's also a number of different insert effects that you can put in here. Uh, so ABC uh, has insert effects. And um, there's some different settings that come into play when each of these when effects are uh, put, into, put into the chain. And the routing allows you to make some changes to how things are routed. But uh, you can also, uh, I think, you know, the default settings are just routing series. And distortion, there's a number of different distortion types. add additional oscillators in here. And they're just kind of basic waveforms, but you get the idea. You can, you can add additional sound in here if you'd like. And here's the amp section, pan, feedback control. So you have that in here as well. And then you have, um, I forget what, what this section is. This isn't really like insert, but this is like the XYZ, uh, XYZ. Uh, also, they're, they're, I think they're like mix or basically like kind of 
uh, outboard effects. At any rate, you can take a look at the routing of how everything is set up uh, within uh, the routing tab here. So you can look and see, okay, this is how the oscillators are routed into the oscillator section, filter section into uh, this B section is off at the moment. And then, um, and that's the, you know, these are the effects. So A, B, C uh, in the effects chain, and then kind of the uh, outboard effects uh, before you get to the output. And um, you could obviously uh, change how these are routed for the effects, or you can change how these are routed uh, for the, um, for that, for kind of like the outboard effects here as well. So uh, very cool, um, and uh, again, you can you can actually control or change how uh, things are routed within uh, the routing section here. So, for example, uh, if you were to pull up a init massive x blank uh, and kind of look at the way things are routed in here, nothing is actually routed yet, and so you would actually have to kind of set things up and kind of choose how you would like the routing to go uh almost almost as if uh you know this were like a reactor instrument you know and you were kind of getting into uh the sort of the belly of the reactor instrument and determining how this were routed um this is also for anyone that's that's familiar with modular synthesis or you know reactor blocks or things of that nature this is definitely not unfamiliar territory you know this is definitely familiar um so, uh, yeah, essentially, um, you can start off in the quick start section and the init massive X or init massive X blank. Uh, and this will give you a very good idea of just kind of going through the synth and learning, uh, where things are, what they do, things of that nature. We're going to go over the performers in a different episode. Um, I wanted to, uh, kind of, uh, keep this fairly short and sweet, uh, but there's many different capabilities that you can look at within the performing section as well. And within the voice section, there's a number of different options. That you have here as well. or a monophonic setting uh, and, and control how many voices are available so you can play notes and hear uh, chord notes at the same time. <coughs> Also, uh, different options here regarding uh, the way the engine is set up um, and uh, noise and things of that nature. Um, so in the envelope section, uh, and there's also some modulation uh, envelopes that may show up elsewhere here as well, but these are essentially the mod what I would call the modulators in, in this section. And um, what you can do is you can actually um, assign these uh, just like you can within uh, the original Massive product. You can assign these to various controls within uh, the um, within the interface, and then you can uh, kind of click the uh, you know if you have assigned it to a control, you can kind of basically assign automation to that control uh, based on um, you know, whatever modulation it's set up to. So essentially, if we wanted to try to do some kind of um, modulation on the, uh, on the, what am I trying to say, on the filter, then what we would want to do is kind of set this up with a different envelope here. <laughs> 